last time this was the circuit which we designed and uh, there was a quick uh, query last time that when I said VGS 3 is equal to VGS 4 is equal to VGS 6 and some people objected to that. Actually smart object I thought by now you should know what I said. Here is one you can now look at it the way it is done. Uh, this is specifically done for you to show how it is done. Let us take a normal mirror both W dial equal to each then uh, VGS 1 is VGS 2 but since it is mirrored VGS 1 is also VDS 1. Therefore this VDS 2 is also VGS 2. Okay. Now having done so we now look at this the structure which is same thing this is your M6 or whatever number what is that uh, transistor there this is that M6 this is the mirror and it is drive, driven from the output to the input of that common source amplifier. Just look at it if the currents are same VGS is same there is no other way VDS can be different okay but the currents are also same. IDS is equal to beta by 2 VDS hat square so that has to be same if the currents are same sizes are same there is no other way it can be different okay. So since we say so I have this normal current mirror which is you can see there these transistors are also identical there as well as here and the output of that is actually fed to the in this is for n channel but you can do it for p channel. Now one can see from here this is VGS1 this is VGS2 and that is also equal to VDS2 and this VDS2 is nothing but VGS3 for this is that correct. Since I3 is the current which is beta dash by W by L3 VGS3 minus VT square and I2 or I1 which is same here is beta and W by L2 VGS2 minus but these are equal okay. If these are equal then I3 by I2 is W by L3 by W by L this. So the ratio this is also essentially one of the method of biasing a common source amplifier from the mirror okay. This is a very standard technique you should know it but I thought since you that the raised issue so I thought I will prove myself that I am right okay. okay. So this you try yourself in case still it is not clear but this is very in my opinion very simple. The open which we looked into all these days was essentially a normal single ended two stage amplifier which we called open. There are other opens possible in the uh, hardware implementations one is cascode amplifier OPAM the other is called high performance this is essentially related to uh, 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 slew rates high speed OPAM is related to the bandwidth the differential output OPAM two outputs which are differential to that is also a differential OPAM which probably we may do not all of them. Then there are amplifier op-amps which are called micro power very low power op-amps. Then there are op-amps which are low noise op-amps very very low noise. We are trying to use very large signal to noise ratio there and maintaining low noise. Then there are op-amps in power electronics particularly we use which are called chopper stabilized at low frequencies. And of course there are op-amps which are at low voltage supply itself maybe 1.8 volt or 0.6 volts. So there are number of op-amps in the literature. Basic idea does not change though for each case you will have to do something to achieve that specification. Is that clear? So look into books. There are all kinds of such op-amps are available. I have done the basic op-amp two stage single ended amplifier but they can need not be single ended as we see earlier it can be double ended as well. Okay. The first thing which probably we may like to quickly do is the cost code. One of the major worry of uh, the two stage single ended OPAM was you are worried about its stability because there was a second stage and there was already a capacitor at the output of the first stage. And then we put CC Miller capacitor so that you can compensate to some extent or put RZ CC to actually compensate the non dominant pole or null that. But that means you, you are actually limiting something because once you start increasing CC for your good compensation you have more worries. If you put RZ higher 
and that 0 which is coming has to be very close to the non-dominant pole. So adjusting W by L for the transistor is not very straightforward as it looks. So why after all your ultimate aim was to see large bandwidth and large gain okay, and stability. So if the second stage is removed then a define has a larger gain, it has only one pole, dominant pole, you can adjust the bandwidth and gain accordingly, you can do that. And to improve the gain of an any define stage or any amplifier stage, one technique we know is to do cross coding. GMR out, so you increase R out. Okay. So let us see, uh, if you look at this curve, single stage cascode op-amp to improve stability issues, one possibility that we have a single stage op-amp with larger gain, since there is no second stage, second pole will not occur, thus increasing stability. To improve the gain, we can have cascode defam and uh, if you look at it, if R out is larger, uh, G B W by A V 0 only dominant pole which is R out by C out. So you have only two things to control, the W by L of the 3 and 4 transistors and W by L of M1 and M2 transistors and you can still increase. Of course the bandwidth will not be very high simply because if you have larger gain then you lose the bandwidth to some extent but at least there is no issue on stability, there is no second pole going on. Of course, there is one pole and 0 from the C3, but that we have already evaluated because of CGS is far, far away, so we do not care for that. So this was once, not that we did this, okay. we, I am trying to re reach what we did finally. So one possibility was we cast code the defam itself. Is that okay everyone? This statements are right is simply because I thought that uh, if I say a little fast or something, you can read at least. You need not write every bit word by word. You should only think what I wrote in general. What I am trying to say that the method is that you can cast code a defam. Okay. Is that okay? So how do you do that? Is it okay? Here is a circuit which is cast code opam or defam. I introduce MCD1, MCD2, MCD3, MCD4, four transistors from the normal M3, M4, M1, M2 combination to make it cascode looking structure. Now there are a few things you should know. Actually I could have connected something like this, but since you know it would have merged with something I put it inside, this is still like mirroring it. From the gate I am going to the drain of this transistor D3. Now you can see from here what a further I did, there is a small resistor R and from this MCD3 to MC I put output here. Do you think why this was done anyone? See I want to bias these two transistors, I must provide a drop across it, okay. So essentially it is a V bias which I am going to create there for and in current will be decided by M1, M3 anyway. So whatever I R drop there will actually decides the bias for it. So a trick of the trade just put small r okay, and this r value will decide when the transistor will be at least at the saturation or little better. By similar logic to cast code this, I put two n channel devices which is MCD1 and they are given a separate bias, the bias. So that these two transistors can, you, you recollect your open uh, uh, cascode stage, we need a DC bias at the series transistor, that bias I am creating. Now question is from where this V bias will come, externally how do I generate these V biases so that I can force these two transistors in saturation and still act as a series transistor to M1, M2, is that clear? This is what we are looking for. I will show you how we do it, we draw the circuit, I am not going to design this, these are circuits, we know the circuit analysis now well, you should be able to design yourself in case such a circuit is required and basically you need not design manually right now, once you know how to design an open, uh, basic design you can continue and put in cast code in, in between. It can be but then two resistors are very bad to operate because they will create an RC time constant. So avoid as much larger number of Rs in your circuits. Okay. 
instead of r in your I, I, one r i may still keep the other i will create out of what you are asking through a transistor which is what we are going to do you are not very wrong okay what is the drawback of this circuit as soon as i do cas code something goes wrong for me which swing but even input icmr goes down because two videos drops okay is that clear so your icmr goes down and smaller the icmr means your linearity is very restricted now okay which essentially means it's for very low signals only you can probably employ this uh, amplifiers so what you said v out is our v o max v minimal also will be reduced because of drops across two transistors is that correct and that is one reason why you can actually there is some other version of this look into the books which is called folded cas code which slightly improves icmr compared to this uh, but essentially still will be worse than the normal single ended op amps okay. okay so this is the drawback so maybe i write reduced icmr and u swing okay so this is the drawback now i want to create this bias this why i chose it because any way you need this the circuit which is shown in the book is good enough to actually create any kinds of such biases this is given in not exactly this way but bias book or to some extent even in rezavi's book okay also there is some bipolar version of this is available in gray and myers book actually you can also try something you can have pi cmos you can one or few transistors can be converted to bipolar and may have advantages and some disadvantage of course with that so there are versions i am just showing you the basic idea of cas codes if i see you know this is creating a problem bandwidth if i increase the gain the bandwidth goes down drastically there it will give gain higher because r out is very high now Now the problem what I see is can I then use the two stage what we did earlier, but actually cas code the output stage. <laughs> okay. okay, instead of the first stage, the source common source amplifier, I will cas code that amplifier. So the second version of this, which actually appeared, is this cas code opam with cas code in different stage can be improved by putting cas code as second stage. But let's see the first one. in which you can see from here this is your normal m6 m7 output stage this is your cas code which we did and to do this i have introduced two transistors mt mc what is called mt2 and uh, mcd4 they are names given in the book so nothing great about okay this is mt1 and mt2 sorry they should not have been changed the name mt1 and mt2 please remember i can use this the advantage of can can you think what is the uh, purpose of mt1 and mt2 because these m6 and m7 are going to decide your gain as well as the slew rates okay so i said okay they should not be connected to the output of the first stage because they they connect directly then they actually limited there so we said okay if that is so i can have a level translators from this voltage and this voltage whose outputs then i can give it to m6 and m7 and if i do this i can have better this but what is the problem with mt1 and mt2 if i put it there again the voltage swings will be now limited because actually you are reducing this values so actually reducing the output swings but slew rate could be slightly better which is independent of gm1 gm2 currents coming from here okay so this additional drive capability which you create separately can do wonders provided you are ready to have lower output swings okay these are tricks what people do alternatively to this as well it just take output stage and cas code it here is that circuit this is given in bias book please look at it again this is essentially required for your slew rate, rate requirement then this currents which are coming from m6 and m7 are not connected from this output these are driven by mt1 and mt mt1 
So, I am changing the bias for this independently. So, the currents which otherwise would have got limited because of the gain which comes from the first stage is now broken by me. I said, okay, I will have a separate voltage requirement for M6 and saluted, of course, this RC has to be because the charge has to be from this side. So, the output has to be RC from there. Okay, I, whenever M6 current is calculated, the output of this stage goes to input of the M6. Forget about this part, this output would have gone to M6. That means, the whatever is currents coming here will and gain I want, this current will be decided from this side. What is the input co VGS coming from there? By putting this translator, I broke that chain. Okay, I broke the chain. I have independent control of bias to this. Now that VGS 6 is not equal to the earlier one, I am now controlling through these two devices my bias for the M6. Okay. So, that means I can change the current here to require output load current requirements, I can change without changing anything here. Is that clear? Otherwise, that will decide what current I can push to the output. Okay. The alternate way, as I said, is to put a buffer at the output that is the common source amplifier. This is your normal base. All that I did is put one P channel and one N channel device in series to M6 and M7. And now I know once I do this, RO of this and RO of this could be boosted. So, RO parallel is even boosted and therefore, one can see the gain will be larger because R out will be GM times R out of the first stage. So, now it is cascode stage, the gain is now boosted by me. Is that correct? Gain is boosted by me. But what is the problem I will create? The bandwidth will proportionately go down because now the second pole has to be, re that means nulling as well as this method has to be found so that the bandwidth is not that much reduced. So, do not increase CC too much. Also, do not increase RZ so much because if RZ is too much, zero will go too much on the left half. It will not nullify the non-dominant pole. So, one has to adjust RZ CC value so that reasonable bandwidth and higher gains are. Please take the point. What did we say in the case of gain bandwidth is broke? That chain we broke in cascode. So that word we are trying to use here by putting cascode at the last stage. However, all these statements I am making, I am telling as this two, two stage op circuit which I am keep showing you is an op -amp. In fact, op -amp is, this is not a real op -amp, okay. Any op -amp you use need to have a final output to be driven by something else because this is not able to draw larger currents. So, the load which V out is going to see may not be very small, it may be very, very large comparatively. Okay. Very large means it may not be larger than R out or something, but at least it will be sufficiently large. For a large output loads, what, should, what do I need? These should provide larger currents, but these currents are provided by this stage as well as the RZCC combination I am going to, GMs are decided from their ratios which means I am not able to really drive a larger load using two stage op amps. Okay. But this word op amp therefore should be slightly with a use with a pinch of salt because this is how we started with as a pedagogy we kept telling it. But we said really actually this does not drive the external load. It may give a good slew rate here, but at the output you need larger currents. Their sizes, how much we call 40, 50, 60. I want larger current means 100, 200 W bias. If I put, I can use larger currents. Is that correct? That means, followed by this, there has to be another stage which is called the buffer stage. Okay? And unless there is a buffer stage, we should not really call that as a OPAM. Why I am insisting on this? Because if there is a op amp without a buffer stage and with little modifications I do that, that block is essentially called OTA operational transconductance amplifier. OTA with a buffer is essentially a op amp. We will come to it little soon. Is that point clear? So, two stage op amp is essentially closer to a OTA. Okay. 
whereas when I put a buffer out, then I actually call it as operational amplifier. Okay. So is that point clear? So the output stage could be what kind? It can be a class A amplifier, can be a class AB amplifier or it can be class B amplifier that is called push-pull. Okay. Which one you will prefer? What is the problem with push-pull? Anyone remembers second year? Crossover distortion or dead zones, okay. the two device may not switch over at the same points. Okay. So there is a dead zone appearing at the inputs. Now this issue, so we will avoid B, class A has a limited gain, okay. so we do not want class A. So I want class AB operation. So what we say, for a while it operates in B okay, and for a short time it operates in A. Okay. So we call that as class AB amplifier. Okay. Is that point clear? So my worries are that okay, I want a next stage which should be able to provide huge currents for the output capacitances. But huge currents I can only get if there are large W by Ls for these transistors. But large W by L means they are decided by the gains from this side. You have no control on that. The W by Ls, you should, you remember GM6 and GM1 were related because of the stability issue which I create should be greater than 10 or something. So that ratio which I could not then play too much forces me to think oh I must have another stage out okay. and that is called the buffer stage and buffers are normally AB or in some cases even B type. Okay. Is that okay? The issue is clear to you? Just for those who have forgotten their second years, this is something slide I think I should show quickly. A class B or A B amplifier basics could be understood by using a circuit shown below. You have a uh, M1, M2 forms the transistor amplifier and uh, M2 receives, of course this is N channel driven, it could be other ways, it is nothing very serious. You can have P drives, N load, N drive, P load. What we do in principle? is to bias M1, M2 by two bias power supplies which is called VGG1, VGG2 and the actual circuit will say how do we create this VGG1 and VGG2. Now you can see from here the way it operates. Depending on these two values, I can make M1, M2 either in working in such a way both working that class A both out, uh, V in plus and V in minus goes through. I can have a class B in which Vn positive either goes to or Vn negative goes through, okay. that is class B and in one third case partly M1 and M2 independent operates and some way both together operates. Okay. This was required for output of the second stage will be of higher voltage swing, V out max you have created, V out my max minus V out min, you have output swing large enough, is that clear? Please know your gain stage you are going through. Okay, so V out is sufficiently high. Now, when this V out or for this transistor which is going to be my vein, if that is moderately large, one can see from here if this increases positive, this VGS increases. Is that clear? But since the bias is kept like this, equivalently saying this decreases total bias is same if you increase that one the other one proportionally goes down. Okay. So current in M2 will increase and current in M1 will actually decrease. Okay. Now this if I keep increasing Vn there may be possibility that this voltage may not be as much as Vt requirement. So M1 may shut off and all the current may only pass through M2. You increase Vn larger and larger, this may switch off and this may become only driving. The converse is true if Vn is minus at certain voltage, this M2 may shut off and fully M1 will operate. But in between these two values, both M1 and M2 will operate and therefore this under those cases when both operates, we will say device is in or sorry, amplifier is in AB class amplifier of AB class. Is that clear? Now please remember C 
since the current in M2 or current in M this, this charges the capacitor, this is off, this charges the capacitor, when this is off, this discharges the capacitor essentially, this is like an inverter driven system. Now in this essentially meaning that if I want this capacitor to be charged fast, I must put larger sizes of M1 and M2 except for a short time when both are on when the huge power will actually consumed otherwise only dynamic power will be consumed by me. Is that clear to you? This is equal taken from inverter side that okay it is like an inverter system in which I can decide dynamic loading, dynamic charging, discharging rather than static charging. Okay. Now this please remember SR should not be used correctly here because it's essentially I am saying the output capacitor charging is also cleared there dv0 by dt at that point. This Vn is our two stage amplifiers output which is going to be the input for the buffer stage. How much will be voltage swing for this? When this is off Vdd minus 1 Vt. Okay, or Vd sat will be as close to at that point is Vt. So Vd minus Vt and how much is there? Vss plus Vtp. So one can see the swing is now very, Vts are much smaller values. So the output swing is also large enough in this kind of class A, A, B or B amplifiers. So one of the requirement was faster charging and larger out, why larger? Because you are putting larger inputs and you want all of it to possibly go out, okay. Otherwise what is it will start going? The distortions and more major distortion we see later is the third harmonic distortions, okay. Because non-linearity starts A0 plus A1x plus A1x square plus A2x cube, you expand this series and you will find which ones omega 1 plus minus 3 is going which means going to hurt the most for us, okay. Okay, so is that point clear? So all that now I have to do in real life is to generate VGG1 and VGG2 by this was only a principle is shown okay that if I generate this depending on the V in values which I am going to get I must choose these values properly so that either this or this is on in most times or for a short time both will be on for you okay. That is not a good area because then the gain actually is falling currents are actually partly taken here and partly taken here is that clear which we do not want because that means all of it is not made available to the capacitor. That case should be for a shorter time. This happens even in a CMOS inverter, okay. This is called short circuit current. Does it flows through P channel and channel turns on both simultaneously for a while when input changes from input to output, so I mean the 0 to 1 when transit it does change the output like that. Same game was played. Now only difference between this and next is what I like to create this VGG1, VG2 such that this transistor amplifier can become class AB. So, okay, here is a very simple circuit which can do this job for you. These M1, M2 are not same as in the DFAM, I mean two stage amplifier, these are just put M1, M2, M3, M4, M6 here. So what is actually an amplifier? M1, M2 is actually forming your class B amplifier, is that clear? The one which I just now showed, these are the two transistors which are actually at this output is the capacitance. Whatever this circuit is going to do is provide VGG1 and VGG2. It is called floating biases, okay. it is called floating biases. Okay. This there is a transistor M6, M5, M4, M3 in series and there are mirror formations here. This M3 is receiving current or biasing from the mirror side, which side that M5, M8 or whatever in the last defam that is an extended dub, okay. Or you can also put a V bias from the circuit which I have created V bias also in my bias circuit. So I can either pick up that or mirror the current from whichever current mirror I have to push this. So I can decide current in. N3 or VDS of this transistor, okay. So what does it do? This is my input. So this is 
whatever this is a amplifier kind of situation this is driven by this transistor this acts like a load for this okay so this is my output which is going to be the input for m2 from the lower side when this vein is opposite this is the maximum voltage then appears here in the negative this minus this so this actually drives m1 okay now the trick here is the maximum current which is decided by m1 m2 whatever we want is beta and vo n square and beta p vo p square so if i adjust my w by l sub these two i can decide and if i know my vo p and vo n then i will be able to decide how much maximum current i can provide for cl to charge and how much i can create generally i will adjust them same okay because the time taken to charge should be time taken to discharge but it need not be every time because many a times once the capacitor charge the next stage requires some time for act further is that point clear this this output will go to some other stage that has some response time so in between discharge if input goes down i have sufficient time for discharge actually please remember there are tricks in the game because once charged the output is now taking time for the next stage to operate when you switch off this it doesn't matter because it still can be delayed because that is still has not completed the operation is that correct so many a times sizing is done so that this time may not be same as this time but as a designer we always try to keep equals so that this issue may not come into mind how much okay is that clear so that is the method of creation of an output stage of a which is class ab amplifier and this class ab amplifier is always the last stage of any opam is that clear last stage of any opam first stage is single ended defam second is gain stage and third is the buffer stage is that clear please remember buffer gains are not in important what is important is currents it can give you as much as this so what should be sizes of this betas should be large enough so that our i out max and i out min are sufficiently large for this capacitor to charge and discharge in a given time what you want is that clear so that something and now since it is not connected with the last two stages this is independently driven by me to any external load i am in uh, connected to is that clear this is how opam normally works okay opam normally works so all this time i was saying opam opam the real opam will have additional circuitry of this kind and if i put this here this is what essentially an opam will look like so you can draw this this is our final opam which almost every circuit in the chip you have is this kind okay i forgot uh, maybe i can now put r r will be of course replaced by a transistor whose bias can be picked up from any of these even this r can be replaced by what a p channel diode connected is that correct the r can be replaced by p channel diode connected device what why we don't want to put r everywhere because the area it takes is very high this will be around 350k to 100k Uh, for thousand k, that means mega ohm sometimes, and that takes huge area on chip. Okay. However, normally R has one advantage, which this has a positive temperature coefficient, this has a negative. So net TCF could be minimized if I put actual R there. So for that purpose, sometimes instead of diode, you actually put a R. Is that clear? This fact has to be remembered. Normal resistance here. positive temperature the other say so we want to reduce to less than 1000 part per million per degree centigrade and that's the way people probably prefer it at times is that clear to you okay and this is my final output stage now this last you know something i draw just check that last part cl parallel to something i put this is our defam this is the first part is bias this part is a defam stage this part 
is essentially your single gain cast code relatively cast code kind this stage but essentially it is screen vgg1 vgg2 fires this m15 and m16 which is your output amplifier or buffer stage okay so how do we design that we first design defam based on that we design gain stage based on that we design what is the buffer stage please do not go the other way and this of course can be independently designed and can actually be kept ready for every one of you okay which may be a common because this line can push anywhere okay and you can adjust w bar ratios to get what the new currents you want okay this why i int intentionally put a rl there since m5 and m m15 and m16 are going to drive with a large currents available so even if you have a resistive load there it can still create v out by ir drops is that clear in the case of you don't have this and you are driving from there then the currents available to you are so small that ir may not reach larger v0 values is that point clear this is an issue which is separating this op amp from an ota which i am going to come now is that clear is that point clear if this currents are not large enough rl cannot reach to vo max vo min values okay and therefore op amps can drive both resistive loads and capacitive loads is that correct that's the major thing which we are trying to say here a op amp with a buffer stage which is always called op amp then can drive any kind of loads is that clear that is the strength of an op amp okay so now we after all this op amp op amp world we slightly modify op amp world with a new device a new amplifier which we call operational transconductance amplifier ota in nutshell what i say is if you buffer it a defam then it is called op amp and if you don't then it is called ota is that correct the the actual ot is not that simple or not that trivial i'll show you the actual circuit which we use but this is essentially difference between ot and op amp is an op amp without a buffer stage is like a ot please take it the actual ot symbols is therefore separated from op amp you can see we cut it partly here make a this quadrilateral kind of thing and it can have both outputs normally op amps have generally single ended outputs is that clear op amps have generally single ended outputs there are separate op amps which are called differential op amps so there will be two outputs but then i will create those op amps out of an ot itself because they anyway i have two such outputs possible is that clear it's not necessary to use both but i have access to both possibility this but in real ot i'll do is i have only one output and i that's what the major ot chips are available okay is the difference clear this is same defam same defam if it is buffered stage gain stage buffer stage then you say it is intentionally i did not put single ended you can have separate bias and can use source current source the instead of diode connected loads the loads could be either of them even here i can have bias or have a mirror okay please remember these are all your thing you can decide any time okay so having shown you that there are two symbols and there are two possibilities now let me give a table which actually separates ota from op amp is that everyone note down shown this figure is trivial but still isko defam as a square bana diya ये ऐसा प्लस माइनस भी कुछ नहीं ऊपर प्लस लगा सकते हो नीचे माइनस दो टर्मिनल है सो डू गेट द वे डू थिंक देर फॉर ओ टी एस कैन बी यूज बिकॉज देर आर नो बफर स्टेज देयर इट कैन ओनली ड्राइव कैपेसिटी लोड इट कैन ड्राइव रेजिस्टिव लोड दैट्स द मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन ओ पैम एंड एन ओ टी ए बट यू कैन ऑलवेज कन्वर्ट एन ओ टी ए इन टू एपैम एंड विल डू एन एग्जाम्पल i'll make an amplifier using an ota and i'll also make an amplifier like normal triangle based circuit resistance 
I will show you with OT also I can get the gain same as what I get from OPAM provided something happens that provided is what it differs between OPAM and OTA. Okay. Table which is relevant for you OPAM versus OTA or OPAM and OTA which are you look at it a typical OPAM is OTA plus buffer therefore OTA does not have a buffer. The second most important point all OPAMs are voltage controlled <coughs> voltage source VCBS all OTAs are voltage controlled current source okay, VCCS. So what will be the output of a OPAM V0 by Vn so AV voltage gain what will be the output of a OTA current is the output and input is the voltage so it is transconductance therefore it is called transconductance amplifier is that clear. Another thing which is which ma is very different between OTA and this for a defam stage what are the loads I used diode connected is that clear. So what is the output node resistance at the defam VO1 or VO2 very small GM 1 upon GM is that correct. Since these are 1 upon GM kinds of outputs come these are called low impedance or low resistive nodes. So in OPAM most nodes are low resistive nodes is that correct whereas we shall see later OTAs the output nodes are actually very high resistive loads or very high impedance nodes and therefore are easy to charge a capacitor is that clear that is the reason can drive all loads OPAMs can drive all loads both RC and RC okay. Drive only possible capacity load and certainly not possible to drive resistive loads for OTA. OTA does not drive resistive loads because their currents are smaller comparatively there are no large size transistors there at the output. So can't drive larger currents and therefore R is very different you got the point why IR is a V0 if I is small that R, IR may never reach the VO max value which you are looking for. Okay. The next is the all OPAMs generally are complex we have seen how much hardware I did and they require large power dissipations to maintain your GMs and there are so many vertical paths. So they are large power dissipation circuits. Comparatively the OTAs are low power comparatively and almost on chip so called amplifiers which you use on chip any O chip you see it will be an OTA and not an OPAM. Okay. This is some interesting part there. Okay. Since OPAM can have any load it can have larger gains it can have any bandwidth by cast code you can do many tricks there high performance high speed they are used in all kinds of applications. So they are called general purpose applications right from instrumentation to communication everywhere or power electron you can drive everywhere whereas these are only generally used in filters which is GMC continuous active filters okay. These are the major difference not that they cannot do amplifications voltage amplification is also possible but this is much higher than what I can get through this is that clear. So I will prefer to use OTAs wherever I need to create larger GMs okay larger GMs and not larger AV0s is that clear is that issue clear. So OTAs are of its own class though I may say OTA plus buffer is not that trivial as I make it because I will show you a circuit later the actual OTA is slightly modified version of what this statement as if gives okay. As said earlier OTA is a VCCS device as shown here. So what does that mean the symbol which I showed you here uh, it actually receives a bias current I bias for input signals of V plus V minus or V in 1 V in 2 whichever way you look at it and it gives me an output current of I0. And then I am interested to know I0 upon V plus minus Vn 
uh, or v delta v i d or v i d whatever you write and that is called the transconductance capital G m. Okay. Why it is called capital G m? Because it is from the output to the input there are only small g m s as the part of this circuit. Okay. If I see equivalent circuit of this you can see from here this is my v difference this is gm time v difference is what is appear this is equivalent circuit of this okay so i0 is gm times v plus minus vm okay capital gm you can make so i0 you make it capital gm so i0 upon v dif uh, difference is transconductance uh, and since it's a higher so if i make i0 higher than the v difference for which i am finding that then gms are higher and we say it is a good transconductance amplifier. So what should I do therefore, G m should be improved, is that correct? A good transconductance amplifier means large G m s. So like of course there will be, we, are, we will not calculate but maybe you think over it or someone lastly maybe I will put it on the web. There are bandwidth issues, there are noise issues with OTA and OPAMS. Uh, either you read or maybe I will put some words on that on my web page okay. so that you can see why OTAs are not all that great as people think but in some cases they are the best device to operate. Is that okay? This is only equivalent part of that so let us draw a actual OTA and see how much it differs uh, that is the real life OPA, uh, OTA implemented on a chip the circuit diagram is taken from that. So you can, and this is taken from Boyce and Baker's book. You can, I keep telling you day one, if you really want to learn the real life uh, analog designs, do look at Boyce and Baker because Baker being the chief scientist of all over the world, uh, he has been actually fabricating the newest of uh, analog blocks, okay. And because of that, the data, of course he gives very old data to you that is okay. But the numbers which he is giving is essentially tested chip. Rosal is extra, extraordinary in good theory but he never gives the numbers which probably you may get actually on chip. Okay. He may put in many things ideally. Okay. Baker does not do that. He knows exactly what is the real chip will give you. So his values of sometimes very odd looks to you but they are essentially what he has obtained during designs, uh, during realizations. So please start looking through that book because it gives the real life, but it is old technology, it is not modified, it is new book, they are modified, the old book has still 5 microns, okay. does not matter, Akmeli a theory equally important. Hai. So a typical OTH diagram is shown here, this is your DFAM, this is double ended, is that correct, it is double ended. अभी ये बुक का स्टाइल है देखो यहाँ से आउटपुट ना लेते हो यहाँ से ले लिया क्योंकि वो कनेक्टेड है ना सो वी नॉर्मली शो फ्रॉम हियर कि ये शोन फ्रॉम हियर विच इस सेम पॉइंट सो दैट्स द वे पीपल यू नो डिफर इन राइट इन शोइंग फिगर्स ओके दिस आर टू डायोड कनेक्टेड बट नॉट मिरर्ड इस दैट करेक्ट � not connected like this to create a single ended output. It is a two different diode connected loads. Okay. On your right if you see the output of this stage DFAM which is taken from here or here they are same is given to M4 which is like your M6 in the op amp stage, gain stage. Please remember we are not looking for what in the case of OTA voltage gain, we are not interested in voltage gain. What are we interested in? GM means currents. Okay. So we will see what currents M4 will drive. Okay. On your this side of load, there are another transistor which is M3, another P channel transistor which is receiving output from VO1. VO1 is giving input to the M3. Okay. These numbers are also taken from Boyce's book. I mean you can put any names but this is what I say. Define has the input plus minus V in 2 minus plus V in 1. This M4 is connected to a M5 in series down. 
and this M5 gate is connected to M51 on the other side which M51 is connected in series to M3. So what is this node has the impedance higher or lower VO1 and VO2 nodes 1 upon gm smaller loads okay. But at this output which is like a buffer stage or equivalently this there is no gm kind so RO parallel RO huge output resistors are created. We are asking now RO is output is higher, yes RO out is higher actually. Now the game is from M41 to M4 the size changes k times. M5, M31 and M3 are the same size, M3 and M51 are also of same size. But M51 or M3 to M5 or M31, M3, M5 equal, but this is again k times, okay, larger size. This is also larger times, but larger of M41, okay, k times that, k is more than 1. The minimum value of k will be 1. Okay. We can start with saying N channel devices are similar. P channel devices are similar so that beta n1 is equal to beta n2, beta p31 is equal to beta p41. This I can assume W bias are same, mu c ox is same. So they are identical, they are identical. Now you can see from here last stage, very carefully you see it. The way I have shown, shown the current, this current is going coming down and this current is going up, okay, AC current do not say DC current. So what will be the current here? The sum of the two or subtraction, this is minus, 1 minus or minus means add of this the current will be very high here. Is that clear? We will see how. But is that point clear? This current, this currents add at the capacitor end and therefore the currents are larger, larger the current, output current, larger is GM. This is what we are saying. By making it k, I have actually boosted the current. Is that clear? By making it k times, I actually have boosted the current. Now the way it operates, if these voltage AC signal change, since these are 180 out of phase, so if one changes one direction, the other will change the other directions. If this decreases, this decreases, this also will correspondingly again one, it goes up like this. This way, this goes down again. So the idea behind choice of such circuit is that between these two M4, M5 currents, AC currents are always opposite. Okay, AC currents are always opposite because of the phase I am creating out. Okay. Now this idea that I can change the phase out is very interesting because then I out is sum of these two currents. Subtraction means actually magnitude wise they will add. These two currents will be functions of something like this and something like this. Okay. So I can have control on this, I can have control on this and then I will say okay, I out I can get higher for given V in 1 minus V in 2 or V in 2 minus V in 1 such that I can have larger output current for same difference. Is that clear? Of input signal. This is what we essentially do. Is that figure drawn? Is the issue clear? Positive negative signal will push the up and opposite signs. Okay. M4, M5 is the output stage of this where the capacity load has been kept. This is my output stage. Is that clear? This is my output. Otherwise from where the currents will be picked up to drive the capacitance. The way I have done it that this current will come through M4 and since larger size I will boost this current. Since this is k times this is going opposite so I will boost this current also and this minus this will be more current at the output so that I can charge the capacitor faster. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, having shown all this, there is some, okay you keep that figure in front of you, I will keep in here. I am first trying to calculate the current in this p-channel device. So IDS3 is nothing but minus gm1 by 2 v in 2 minus v in 1. But if you see IDS3, 3, 1 and IDS4, 1 they are in 
opposite because one will increase the other will correspondingly decrease. So, IDS31 is minus IDS41 is equal to minus GM1 by 2 V into minus V1. Now, the way we did it, please remember this is something trick we are playing. Beta 4, this should not be 4 here, beta 4 which is this, beta 4 for this is beta dash P into W by L by 4, but we also know this W by L by 4 to 4 1 the size is K times. So, K times beta P dash W by L by into 4 1 is beta 4, is that correct? Beta 4 1 is K times that of beta 4. Is that okay? Or beta 4 is k times beta 4 1, okay. But you can also see beta 3 1 and beta 3 is same. These are not k ratio, they are same. Since they are same and we also since same currents are flowing here and here for the bias, betas here are actually same as both sides. So, essentially say beta 3 1 is same as beta 4 1, please take it size of this is same. So, beta 4 1 is replaced by beta 3 1. So, k into beta 3 1 is same as k into beta 4 1, but we know beta 3 1 is same as beta 3. So, k times beta 3 size, I am just using my sizes. And finally, before we come last, this size is also k times. So, B beta 5 is k time beta 5 1, okay. So, we already said since the two currents are in out of phase, IDS 4 is, IDS 4 is out of phase of IDS 5 and then I can write IDS 4 is nothing but I, k times IDS 4 1, only W by L has changed from this and minus since this is minus of this, so k times minus IDS 3 1, opposite. Then what I say once I declare this is that expression you note down, I know IDS 4 which is related to IDS 5 by opposite phases and each is related to why 4 1 3 1 I use because these are the currents from the defense stage, okay. So, I am trying to equate those currents with that. Why I am interested in these currents? Because GMs will come from defense stage, GM is coming from defense stage. So, I must know what is IDS 1 and IDS 3 1 and 4 1. What is the output impedance of this? Has everyone noted down? Okay. What is the output impedance here? Parallel C, okay. that is the fun. So, if you look at the output impedance at V out is RO 4 parallel RO 5 parallel 1 upon J omega C L impedance of that. Is that correct? Now generally, I mean I am not saying every time, you may have to figure it out at a given frequency range. You may find these values, this is much higher than these values because normally the OTAs have lower bandwidths. So generally this may be true, but in real life figure it out and then use my statement, okay. But as I say if you normally unless I do intentionally mischief, things will be correct on this. So, R out is normally equal to R O 4 parallel R O 5. Now, we define the current common current I D S which is equal to I D S 4 1 equal to minus I D S 3 1 just com same they are same na? so I put I D S which is nothing but equal to G M 1 by 2 V in 2 minus that is what I derived earlier. So, what is I out current? Please look at it what is I out current? this current minus this current. So, IDS 4 minus IDS 5 which is k times IDS 4 minus k times IDS 3 1 and since these are opposite signs they will add. So, I get 2 k times IDS is that correct, but what is IDS G M 1 by 2 V in 2 minus V 1. So, I get 2 k G M 1 by 2 V in 2 minus V 1. So, now I get a ratio of I out by difference voltage which I call it transconductance of the amplifier which is k times g m 1, is that clear? k times g m 1. So, k is in my hand, how much size I put ratio wise, g m I can decide by from where? 
the size of m1 m2 or the m5 current i push in is that correct bias current i push in size is that correct i can decide my gm now here is the interesting part please everyone has seen i out by v in 2 minus v in 1 is trans conductance which is nothing but k times gm1 or gm2 because they are same for the sake of brevity i may even calculate the voltage gain we have done current this trans conductance so v out upon v in 2 minus 1 is output uh, voltage by this output voltage can be written as ids into this this which is equal to then substitute correctly all these values. So, I get k time gm1 into ro4 parallel ro5. What is kgm? What is kgm1? Capital gm. So, av0 is capital gm multiplied by the output resistance. I can have voltage amplifier we mila na apko. So, it is not that it is not doing voltage amplification. So, the two stage op amp is also doing this job. The first part there is essentially OTA based. Okay. Now, for the sake of brevity, I choose K is 1, which is like an open, there there is no increase, so we say okay, 1. So, GM is GM1, AV0 is this, which is what you would have got in a defense stage anyway. Since GM1, now look at the way I did, GM1 is 2 beta 1 into ISS, which is in this case IDS 5 by 2. Okay. Now, I choose my IDS5 such that it is twice the bias current I create that is double the size I keep. I, I bias twice of that I pass through my 5 fifth M5 transistor. So, that you know this half there is nothing 2W kya kyo ho gaya okay. If I substitute this here to I bias have you please note down and then I will put the last few slides for that. Transconductance on man, why it is OTA. So, please remember OTAs are why they are so important is this. Now, this fact which, which I am showing you is important. And note it down, everyone. Now, you can look at it. If I put that I ID5 is 2 I bias, this become 2 beta 1 W by I bias. So, GM is proportional to root of I bias and capital GM K times GM is also proportional to root of I bias. What is the advantage of this? If I change the bias current, I will change the trans conductance is that directly as proportion root of course, but is that clear? So, now I must figure it out. If I want a particular GM and GM 1 upon GM is hot resistor. So, if I want to create a 1 upon gm as large, I uh, mean r smaller, I should boost larger gm. Why should I need small r? What is the time constant associated with the output 1 upon rc? Is that correct? At uh, frequency. If r is smaller, the frequency is larger. Filter mein kya dekhte rehte Cut off point, you know. So, GM decides the cutoff for the filter, but GM is decided by bias current I choose. Okay. So, I have a o OTA which I can nicely configure to create a low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter and it is active device. Why? Because GM is active element, is that correct? It is not a passive uh, filter, it is an active filter which is connected from the DC bias current. Now, the question is DC bias current externally how will I, you will have a voltage, it's my current source to nahi dal sakte na. So, something I must create a voltage control pair, the pin should have variable voltage control. If I do that and if I change I bias for that control voltage, then I will be able to, con from that V control, I will change the GM value. Is that correct? So, here is a circuit which is very simple. This is what you had. I added this additional mirror side from this side P channel. You are looking for there is a resistor here, is not it? Instead of that, I mirror it through another P channel and put a series transistor M10 whose input is 
variable control as we call and the resistor R. Now you can see from here if you have drawn the figure they are same sized M9 and M8 are same size so the current here is same as this mirrored okay. So if this is my I bias current and for the diffam I have made double size so it is 2 I bias current so that the earlier expression is valid. And if I bias is to be created from this, the current across this must change, is that current? So that the voltage here should be such that it create this I bias current. What current R can receive? What M10 can provide? Okay. Now I bias, you can see from here, this voltage minus this voltage divided by R. What is this voltage? VGS of this, is that correct? So V control minus VGS 10 is this voltage, the minus 0 of course if you wish, divided by R is the bias current. Now here is a catch. So normally for, if I keep this W by L10 very, very large, so VGS will be very close to VT. For the sake of those who do not agree, I will just solve for them. If the size of this is 100, 200 or 500, then the VOV will be less than 10 millivolt or 20 millivolt. So VGS will be almost close to VT. So I now know this VT, I know my control voltage which I am varying. If I fix R, then I know my bias current. Once I know bias current, I know my 2 by I bias current, which I bias each can give me my GMs. And if I have K factor known to me, I have my transconductance K times GM1, and I also know my I out. So I know what is the transconductance essentially at the gain, both transconducting gain as well as the voltage gains are possible. Is that issue clear to you? Yes, IDS is beta dash by 2 W by L into VGS minus VT. Let us say I want 10, 10 microamp current for the heck of it. This is 110 into 10 to power minus 6 for n channel device by 2. Let us say I make it 200 large size. VGS minus VT. If I do it 20 into 10 to power minus 6 upon 110 into 200 into 10 to power minus 6 is VGS minus VT minus 6. First one, it's okay, fine. That's not very issue important. Okay. So 20. This is 10. So it is 1100 under root is VGS minus VT, this will be roughly 0 0.02 or 0 0.05, less than 0 0.02, 10 millivolts or lower. So one can say VGS is close to VT, yes. is that clear? So one of the techniques of forcing a transistor to remain in saturation is increase the W by L, okay. it will force itself to reach to saturation. Is that clear? This is a trick which we follow often wherever we push forcibly okay increase the size. Is that should be clear? This thing sometimes I said it is equal to v, VT only. This VT comes from because of large W by L. If W by L is smaller this is not valid okay but if W by L is large enough so this M10 which I was showing you here must be of the order of 100 or 200 or more so that it guarantees this voltage as VGS v in minus VT and that VT is known to me. So roughly I can control my current here and then I can control current here. So GMs are controlled, K times GM is my. So bias current, instead of bias current, what is then the output will be? GM will be proportional to V control. So I that then I change the voltage and I actually get different output currents, is that correct? The external pin has only V out, uh, V controls 
pin. It does not because I is very difficult to push, you will have to create source of yours. Bias is always available. So, pin has a control voltage pin which changes the GM of the OTA. Is that clear? That is how next time we will do quickly some filters okay, out of this and then start on a new area which is not connected to op amp uh, analog per se which is noise. Let us see how much noise we can make. 